A stranger I arrived here. A stranger I go hence. May time was good to me. The girl spoke of love. Her mother of marriage. Now the world is dismal. The path veiled in snow. For my journey, I cannot choose my own time. I must pick my way myself through this darkness. My moon-cast shadow acts as my companion. And on the white meadow, I look for deer's footprints. Why should I stay until they drive me away? Let stray dogs howl outside the master's house. Love loves to rove. God made it so from one to the next. Sweetheart, good night. I will not disturb your dreams that would spoil your rest. Soft, softly shut the doors. As I leave, I shall write good night upon the gate for you so that you may see I have been thinking of you.
flaming fast behind each mountain peak. Ere night comes, with dark shadows, you flee. Sweet hope, now bleak. Farewell. Farewell. Ah, the friend's thoughts are no more with his fair and faithful bride. <laughs> Thank you.
My Dream, July 3rd, 1822. I was a brother of many brothers and sisters. Our father and our mother were good. I was devoted to them all with a deep love. My father took us to a feast where my brothers became very merry. I, however, was sad. My father approached me and commanded me to enjoy the delicious food, but I could not, whereupon my father, becoming angry, banished me from his sight. I turned my steps away, and my heart, full of infinite love for those who disdained it, was torn between the greatest grief and the greatest love. For long years, I wandered. Then, the news of my mother's death reached me. I hastened to see her, and my father, softened by sorrow, did not hinder my entrance. I saw her corpse. Tears flowed from my eyes. I saw her lying there like the happy old past in which, according to the deceased's wishes, we were to live as she herself once had. And we followed her corpse in sorrow, and the coffin sank down. From that time on, I again remained at home. Then my father took me into his favorite garden, and he asked me if I liked it. But the garden was wholly repellent to me, but I dared not say so. Then flushing, he asked me a second time, did I like the garden? Trembling, I denied it. Then my father struck me, and I fled. And for a second time, I turned my steps away, and with a heart full of infinite love for those who disdained it, I again wandered into a distant land. For long, long years, I sang songs. When I would sing of love, it turned to pain. And then again, when I would sing of pain, it turned to love.
virgin who had just died and around her tomb formed a circle in which many youths and old men perpetually walked as though in bliss they spoke softly so as not to wake the virgin heavenly thoughts seemed forever to be showered upon the youths from the virgin's tomb like fine sparks producing a soft rustling I too longed to walk there but only a miracle, people said, leads into this circle. Nevertheless, I went into the tomb with slow steps and lowered gaze, filled with devotion and firm belief. And before I was aware of it, I found myself in the circle, from which there arose a wondrous, lovely sound. And I felt as though eternal bliss were compressed into a single moment. My father, too, I saw, reconciled and loving. He clasped me in his arms and wept, but not so much as I. Thank you. 
Thank you. 